Hi everyone, Emmy here. I'm so excited to show you how to make this lovely bracelet. So this is using freshwater pearls that I got at Michael's and a few other elements with some leather. So it kind of gives it this bohemian style where you have, um, you know, different elements. So leather, which is from an animal and um, the pearls which is from the sea from another type of animal I guess sea creature so um, gives it that bohemian style and you can create whatever colors charms and findings you like to suit your uh, taste so let's take a look so this one I did with some um, silk uh, beading thread for uh, knotting pearls so that's what we're going to do on this but what we're going to do is we're going to do one for a guy it can be for anybody gender neutral um, but I specifically wanted some colors to match the pearls that I have <laughs> and wait till you see the color of the those pearls I was so excited they I think they were called blue but they are a lot darker but they're gorgeous so I thought this is a perfect idea for my brother-in-law so this one's for you Peter so let's take a look at what we're gonna make and I guess I should show you before we go on to the supplies um, that you're using a button closure let me adjust the camera here. So you're using a button closure and it goes through the leather and that is the button and it's attached to the silk cord and you've got your knotting and then at the end there is a way that you can make it knotted on this you could actually connect it to this um, jump ring or spacer I, I don't know what they call them when they're this big but uh, we'll call it a closed jump ring you can attach it and come back through here what you have to do is when you go through these last few beads rather than knot them just go through them and then bring your silk cord around and down and then knot them as you go down so you can do it that way. I just went ahead and added a clamshell and hid the knot inside. It was it was hard to get it cut properly, but you get the idea. So that is another way to do it. And you know what? It kind of went nicely with the gold tone. And then I just added the charms at the end. So I'll show you how to do this and we'll do it on a different bracelet. So these, again, some wonderful Michaels. Uh, freshwater pearls these are called let me see if they give the name just um, seven by eight millimeter potato pearls they didn't don't say the color but they are let's adjust the camera because the darker colors sometimes you need to adjust the camera oh, seems to be okay. So this is what we're going to use so you can imagine this will look amazing for anyone but particularly for my brother-in-law so I um I make him bracelets and <laughs> in all the pictures he's got a different bracelet on and they came to visit for my birthday and just after I had my breast surgery and uh, each day he wore a different bracelet it was really nice so this is one of my favorite buttons. It's a pewter button. And that's what it looks like on the end. So we're going to add this. This is from an American Liberty dime. And uh, I can't remember the the um, the god with the wings on his head. I forget the name. I'm sure somebody will mention it to me. And so I have two closed jump rings and I kind of like this one better it's more like I'm, I'm trying to match it with the size of whatever button I have but if you look that one's pretty much the same size as well and you see this one's pretty big for the size pearls but it seems to match but you know what now that I look at it it's it matches the size of the button 
I, I kind of like this one for a more rustic feel that kind of goes with this kind of weathered look. So let's stick with that one. And then we have, my brother-in-law's name is Peter, so we have one of these tear cast charms with his initial. And then we are going to put a beautiful, another tear cast charm. These tear cast charms are really gorgeous and they're so reasonable. They're usually about a dollar thirty each and when there's a sale you can get them for a dollar. So so we'll put the koi fish on there. And then we have some jump rings. These are silver plated seven millimeter and then I have a silver plated clamshell. So we'll put those aside for now. And so we need two other elements, important elements. We need some leather to create our closure for the button and I have this metallic silver actually is it silver gray metallic gray color which kind of goes it looks dark on the camera it's actually light let me see if I can lighten this up there we go so you can see that the variation from the dark I kind of am going towards this but let me show you the other color I have that I think might suit it this one is called shell it's it's like a pearlized or a metallic and it kind of goes with this oh that's way too bright let me fix this there so it kind of goes with that but does it really kind of tones this down a bit but you know what I think I'm going to go with my first thought and that's the gray so the other piece that we need is our silk cord and I'm a bit limited in that I had ordered some so the thing with that I'm finding with the silk cord is first of all I find that the size 4 works really well with um, these potato pearls and um, the holes are just the right size it's it's a bit kind of sneaky getting through the second strand but with the needle attached the way it is on these works great and then as for the color I you know I would have preferred if I had maybe a gray or a um, a black but um, I find that when you start to mix elements together as they're like closer together you don't notice how different the colors are unless it's a real stark contrast so one of the things I was going to show you is this mermaid when I had it in the package it looked silver when I, I thought you know what I'm going to put it on anyway and I felt like maybe it was a bit tarnished because it had a bit of a a yellow tinge to it but once I set it on this it's definitely gold so you know use what you have don't freak out if it's not what you had intended so let's put this aside for now because we're gonna I, I like to start with the clasp and that's because it's a little bit of a um, a technique to it so take your jump ring because if you look your clasp is going to be on the jump ring we're going to create these barrel knots you don't have to create a barrel knot I like them because I like the way they look but I also like them because um, if your leather is stiff it holds everything in really well if your leather is stiff and you try to put just a regular knot it's really hard to keep that knot from un undoing so definitely use what you have and what you feel comfortable with so you're going to take it and put it through just the one end through and you're going to take a look and, and hang on to this the one side that you have through for how long you want things to be so there's a few things you have to consider with that you have to consider your button size so this button's a little bit smaller so we don't need as big but if you have problems getting your bracelets on 
definitely go a bit wider on each side but we could probably bring that in a bit because the leather stretches too and then remember we want to put these tassels on the bottom you don't have to but they're kind of nice you need a lot of leather not necessarily to create the tassel but to get your your leather up and around so I always give extra so I think I might need some actually that's probably enough on that one so let's move this aside and start so you can kind of pinch this down a bit hold it like that and grab your barrel knot tube so this is basically just a tube bead a metal tube bead you can order these from any jewelry uh, supply store or aliexpress or ebay i think i got these about three years ago off of ebay and i have given so many away and i still have tons so they're a bit tarnished and stuff i wouldn't use them on a bracelet but they work great for this if you don't have this you can use a straw just cut a straw and it's the same so you're going to take and put your tube and hold everything your two strands plus your tube you're going to take your long piece and you're going to go under and over once now when you go your second time you want to be going towards your other hand so don't go this way you want to go over there and however many turns you make is how it's going to look so if you just want two then stop at that i like three just to fancy it up a bit and then take the other piece so part of this technique is learning to like hold your fingers so i tend to switch back and forth take your long end put it through the barrel tube slide it all the way through and you can see it's coming out on this side that and keep going and then you can push the knot the uh, barrel tube now switch fingers again you're going to hold that piece that's a bit loose on the other end until we get it tight and go through like that and pull it through now it's still a bit loose we're going to tighten this but you see how there's so much space here you want to shorten that so that it's just a little bit snug but give some room for it to move around so you can just wiggle your your knots up like that so leave about that much space and then pull tight and just go around and get them kind of cinched together and pull tight and you can kind of use your fingers to get it where you like it so that's the first one and you can if you want to change this length you can always use that this is the short one here okay so now we're gonna now if you're not sure uh, about which length or how much length to put on the one side what you can always do is do them even and then when you go to do the second knot use the opposite strand and that will even out how much leather you're using and how much you'll have at the end so let's take a look at our button now before we put our next knot so we're probably going to put it right about there so i'm just keep my fingers there take my barrel knot slide it in there and you take your long piece go under and around three times and then through the tube and push that through switch fingers and pull that through that and then before we tighten that we're going to test our button again 
and that is lots of room. I think we might just cinch it up a little bit as we're tightening. So it's going to go down again as we tighten. And before I tighten that all the way, get that in there. That's a lots of room for that to go through. Short one is the tightening one. There. Just like that. Now we have two pieces left. We can do our tassels. The tassels are basically a knot. So you if you're not sure you don't have enough, you can just go ahead and create a knot. But I'm gonna see if I can get a use the barrel knot for this. You can see like there's not a lot of leather left for this. And don't worry that's going to slide to the end of the leather. It's just we're running out of... So just pop that down and squeeze that in. My experience is to cut a bigger piece of leather now it's not kind of realistic for people that maybe don't have a lot of leather on hand so let me grab my tweezers here I'm just going to hang on to this as I tighten it And pull that tight. And if this happens, don't worry. This piece here, that's that. All you do is pull these apart, straightens it out. So there. So that knot's not coming out. If you want, you can put some glue, but I never do. I don't feel that it needs it. And let's get the next one on, like that around and slide that down so you can get your leather in there. Gonna sneak that guy in and you can see there he is. There she is. So then let's make sure this doesn't come out. Let's see if we can tighten this. So I tighten one way and then pull the other. Seems to do the trick. I don't think this is going anywhere. And you can always clip that little piece off. Let me grab my cutters. I use my cutters for that. Gets a nice clean edge. And make sure this one is on really well. And we're done with this one. Okay. So I'm just squeezing it back into the round shape and just cutting a clean edge off that. There. And so this one here, you can see one's longer than the other, and that's fine because it gives it some asymmetrical look to it. And uh, I kind of like it that way. It doesn't have to be the same. So that's for that. Now we're ready to add our silk cord onto this piece here. Or actually, we're going to cut it, add it to the button. So we'll set that aside. Let's get our beads out. So I'm going to cut one strand here. Um, this is interesting. I, I'm surprised they have this on uh, like a silk cord. Usually they have it on plastic. Maybe the, it wouldn't fit on the plastic. Uh, that's not a good sign. So on the bracelet for myself, I have a small wrist. I made the bracelet a little bigger. So I um, I ended up with like four, three or four beads, pearls left over. For this one, I measured it on the mandrel. This is going to be seven and a half inch. So it should take one full strand and that should be enough, but we'll measure it at the end. So these 
come with a needle and these are nice and thin so I have bought these twisted needles from the craft store or the fabric store and um, open that there. and um, they're a lot thicker so I don't know if anybody's heard of where you can buy these ones that are thin I mean the great thing is that the cord this silk cord is actually um, twisted onto the needle the eye of the needle so you're only putting one strand through the needle at once with if I were to you know buy a needle like this and then put my strand I'd have to double it so then you have less space for your needle to go through the bead and I save my what's left of my silk cord and use it so actually the bracelet that I made was the third item that I made with the one thing of silk cord it's uh, two meters and you can get these anywhere that sells beading stuff okay so they're going to start with threading everything all your beads onto your let me think about that for a sec <laughs> yeah so we're going to thread everything on i have so many projects on the go so this is a bit tight some of these oh well um, yeah, I have so many projects on the go that I have to think about what I'm doing when I'm talking to you all. I, so I had my, um, radiation therapy and, um, the, you know, the first week after or the first week of the radiation, I did get a lot of, uh, side effects. And then it, it kind of settled down. I was a bit tired, but that was about it. But apparently at week three is the inflammation process starts again because what they're doing is they're targeting the cancer cells. So when the cancer cells come back, because of course the cells will replicate and uh, so what happens is when they come back, you know they can't fix themselves like a regular cell can so there's a huge inflammation process that happens and uh, in week three so I am just it started last night and uh, kind of currently dealing with that um, right now it's not enough to stop me from doing a video <laughs> you guys are probably laughing like yeah there's not much gonna stop you Emma <laughs> Um, I haven't, uh, my wife went out for a bike ride today without me. That was tough, but there was just no way the last couple of times I went for a bike ride, my legs and arms were like rubber and I didn't want to fall. And it was like miserable because you're like, oh my God, this is not fun. You're shaking. And so I thought, nope, time to take a break. Just go for some walks in the neighborhood. So they're all on. I'm going to draw them to near the end. You don't have to do it this way. I'm doing it this way so I can reuse the rest of my silk with the needle attached. If you're just using it the one time, then just, you know, do the midpoint and go from there. So I am going to leave a strand at the bottom, maybe a bit less, because all I need at the bottom will be to attach it with the clamshell. So in the meantime, let's put a bead stopper on this so it doesn't go anywhere. Let's go to about there. And now we are ready to attach to our button. And what I did on the other one, you can do, so I'm passing it through with the needle, through the button, and bringing the cord all the way through but leaving some space at the top like that. Um, 
on this one I did just the the one knot and it just the metal from the button seemed like it was too close to the pearl and I didn't want it to like damage the pearl and chip it so I think we're going to do the same on this one we'll do a few knots so I am just doing some basic knotting here like this like that and then just do that a few more times so we'll go through and pull it all through like that as you can see Oh, <laughs> hooked on the arm of my chair. Oh, it's hooked really good. Let's see how many more things I can hook onto. Okay. And I'm just going to mention to, I know there's been a few comments lately about I talk too much and, um, I take too long. I just want to clarify if you're new to my channel, I don't edit any of my videos, which also means I don't fast forward it. So there is a button right here. If you tap the, there's like a little wheel, you tap that, it's like a settings button. And then down here, it'll have a drop down window and it'll say speed, video speed. And you can click on like a faster speed so it'll sound a bit funny that I'm talking faster um, but, and there's several options you can go like a quarter faster half faster or a full two times faster and you can also slow it down if I'm talking too fast so I think this is probably enough right here so that's always an option you can always fast forward your um, the video to the section you want to see so we're going to start with our first one since we already have knots I'm not going to add a knot there but normally you would add a knot before you string so now we're going to go through the string is already through the one side we're going to bring and I'm holding my thread down to make room for the needle to go through and it's tight that oh, went through so let me get me get these guys. Just pull it through and pull everything through. Yeah, that's tight. Um yeah, so I don't edit my videos. So I don't fast forward through anything. And I do talk a lot and I tell stories and stuff. So if you don't want to miss the stories, definitely. I know some of my subscribers that have been with me for the, a long time don't want to miss any stories. So. And I mean, I, I just want to point out too that that I appreciate people being polite as well so um, you know telling me that I talk too much can sometimes be a bit insulting <laughs> as my wife says I know I talk too much <laughs> I don't need you to tell me so we're gonna make our knot pull it through and this is what you would call the um, two-strand method. So you don't have to worry about getting tweezers to get the knot right up because you're using two knots. So when you pull it, it goes right to the edge of the bead. So let's get the next one. And bring the strand down a bit. Get that through. 
And the other thing I wanted to point out too, if you're one of those people that said you talk too much or your videos take too long, um, just remember too, like I just went through some serious cancer treatment. I and you know we've I've been isolating the whole time because of COVID and because of waiting for this cancer treatment. I didn't want to have anybody say, "Oh, you can't have this surgery or your treatment because you have COVID." So I have been isolating in the house. So I'm a bit like um chatty Kathy because I haven't talked to anybody in forever. Besides my wife. She's getting tired of me. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> so there's the second one. So we just keep doing that. But um, the other thing I want to mention, and then I won't mention this again, and is that the video that I got those comments on was a bracelet video. Um... Let me think which one it was. Oh, it was this one here. This one here. I have to tell you, so this was the very first bracelet that I ever made of this design. So if I was talking a lot through the instructions, it was because I was working it through in my head as well. Because on the video, that's only the second time I've done that design. So you have to consider those things. And, you know, if that stuff is important to you where you want a polished video, there's so many wonderful beaters out there that do that and put a lot of work into it. I mean, I put a lot of work into this but nowhere near what those people do and you know for some people it's a business it's not for me this is a way to socialize and meet people and have fun and so so if you're so the need you can see the needle there we can get it through with your nail if you're having problems one of the things you can do is you can pull your thread through and sometimes the needle will come with it See if we can get that in there. There we go. Pull it through. And when you're pulling it through, because this is twisted, it will want to unravel the thread the other on the other end. So just be aware of that that it will get all twisted and knotted. So you want to kind of pull it out a bit, then pull a bit more, and there's pull both pieces. If you're not sure just pull them tight and then get your knot in there and through pull it through and like that so this is gonna look amazing and the blue looks perfect so get our second fourth I guess so we have a few of these to go I I kind of wish now that I had done another one so that I could get it partially done to show you because once you know how to do this knotting part this is a bit repetitive so definitely head on to the next part of the video and I know there's people that do videos like this that do chapters so you can just tap it and it'll advance to that section again that would involve editing <laughs> way too much work I'm not about the work I'm about the fun one of my th things that my wife taught me early on doing stuff she's like you know it's supposed to be fun so when I stress out about something she reminds me these things are meant to be fun. If you find yourself getting frustrated, then you need to find something else to do, I guess. I made that bracelet that I showed you, the pink one, last night before going to bed. 
So that was the other thing I was going to mention. I feel like there's a knot in here. No? Let me see here. Get knotted. I don't want to pull it in case it tightens. No, it's just kinked. So you see it gets a little kinked. There. And pull it down. Get our knot in. So yeah, the other thing is I'm working on, so I'm working on a bunch of samples for a bracelet video and that's what I've been doing this past week. So I know some people like, some people were concerned for my well-being and wondered where I was because I usually post one video a day or every other day or three in a day <laughs> and uh, I hadn't posted anything in about six or seven days but I have made probably about 10 bracelets and that's because I'm doing them for videos but uh, and I'm also making some firefighter bracelets for some friends their husbands who are firefighters and they are turning out incredible. So I want to show that one in a video, but it's really hard because it involves the sewing machine. And I tried to do it so that it wouldn't involve a sewing machine. And you can sew a certain part by hand, but definitely the smartest way to do it is with the sewing machine. For It's a, it's a kind of a a braided style but you want those braids to stay together so doing using the sewing machine to secure all the strands Let me just watch this piece is coming off there let's see where I'm at and get the next one ready So my wife was joking about I should do a top 10 um, top 10 things that make you think you're or know you're a beater and one of the, one of the ones she said I was shocked she said, you know you're a beater when you're claiming your bead orders are friend mail. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe she said that. I'm like, does she really know? <laughs> Busted! And so this could take a while now that I think of it. And next one. I think maybe if I like get a get a groove here, it'll be fine. So I looked up this type of jewelry reminds me of boho beading boho chic so i don't remember ever like seeing anything about that i'm going to straighten this out so that it doesn't get hooked on the thread goes through the needle a little nicer um so i looked it up and I was actually correct with this design that is considered boho. So the idea is it comes from the word bohemian. And the bohemian style jewelry represents um, like your spirit and um, embracing 
uh, colors and earthy and it's rooted in nature which definitely we have the pearls and the leather um, so yeah I was like oh cool I had it right I think well I started out doing boho style jewelry and then I fell in love with Swarovski <laughs> crystals and I was like, okay, that's definitely not boho. <laughs> that's um, juji or jujin and up. So let's get this the other thing that could be like taking this a while is the length of the silk. I the one I did was the third one, so the silk was quite short. That. And get the needle going on the next one. through and just check your knot because sometimes what happens is the the um, silk gets a little balled up and then you end up with this big knot and you're like I didn't put a big knot in there what the heck and all it is is the silk is balled up the next one these feel smaller than the ones on the pink but they, they'll be fine, it's just, I was, I want to do some bracelets with some really big, chunky beads. I have to say, <laughs> I, um, I ordered some stuff from Shipwreck Beads, and last night I got a message and it said, don't forget to order, and we're going to give you an extra 10% off. So, okay, what can I order? So I ended up getting, the items were 65% off, plus another 10%. So that's 75% off. So why is that not moving? And that knot did not. Oh, I didn't put a knot. Okay, I th I thought I heard it click together. Let me see if I can get that needle to go backwards through this. Let's see if this is yeah, that's the right one. Wrong side here. And of course, it's all tangled here. Okay. that undone. Let's see if it will go through backwards. Whoo, look at that. Okay. I think there's a way that you can tie a knot just by flipping this through the two threads. But I didn't want to take a chance. So I messed this. There we go. OK. 
Okay. I have a ton of stuff to organize. I am shocked at, I guess the last de-stash I did, I put, um, I had some really big plastic bins and I put a bunch of stuff that I didn't have time to sort. So I might be doing some sorting videos. <laughs> and you know, the great thing about sorting videos is they usually are followed by a de-stash <laughs> sale. This is getting a little faster now that the cord's not as long. And I'm not like forgetting to put my knot. So I hope everybody's doing well. I know the kids are back in school today and I think some places in the States they were, they started last week. Let's see what I can do here. This is a tiny, oh, it's going through. This is a tiny pearl. I love these potato pearls. I don't know what it is about the shape that really I find fascinating. Come on. There we go. Tighten. Okay. We are at 47 minutes. I think I'm going to stop this and do it in two pieces because this is a bit... I, I don't remember it taking that long with the other one. Yeah, because this is going to... That's half, more than half. So I will be right back with the finishing of this bracelet. See you in the next video. Bye.